In this video, we're going to take a look at the most efficient ways of studying for your IT certifications and absolutely killing that. Hey, my name is Victor Caballero and I want to help you in your tech journey. If you're new here, welcome. All the links to everything we'll talk about in this video will be in the description box down below. So let's jump in. So why should you listen to me? Well, I've taken about nine plus certifications over the years, and these are the study tips that I've picked up along the way, and I want to share them with you because I know they can help. Now, everyone tells us that we need to study, but no one tells us how to study. The typical techniques that everyone tells us are not always the right ones. So if you've scheduled your IT certification or you're studying for one, I hope in this video, we'll go over some tips that will help your studying be more efficient and less cumbersome two common techniques that are not very effective. Number one, rereading your course material or your notes is not very effective. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying rereading your notes or course material won't aid you in your studying. It definitely will. But there are more efficient ways of studying that can help you maximize your time and make you that much more efficient. Number two, rewatching your courses. Yes, I definitely mean you shouldn't rewatch your Udemy courses. Again, I'm not saying that it won't help because it definitely can, but this is not a very efficient way of learning or retaining knowledge. If you work in IT or have taken a couple of certifications, you may have already tried this. I know I have. We think because we watch that linked list video or rewatch the S3 buckets video, the information will magically stick around in our brains. This is far from the truth. For the more experienced IT pros, you all know that there's nothing like being stuck on a problem for hours and then finally coming up with a solution. There's an immediate moment of clarity that is followed by long-term memory retention. If you get asked two months from now, you will have a much better chance of remembering how to solve that problem. This is basically active versus passive learning. So, what can you do instead? Well. We can do active recall instead of trying to do passive. Three active recall techniques that are efficient and effective. Number one, teaching others. Or a better way to put this is explaining the concept you just learned to someone that has no knowledge of the subject. How does this help? Well, this is a form of active recall and it can help you find gaps in your knowledge when you try to explain something that is complex in simple layman terms. Or as Albert Einstein put it, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. Number two, flashcards. Yes, the good old boring flashcards. Specifically, Anki flashcards. These not only use the act of recall, but also spaced repetition. Regular flashcards will have you thinking you know something until you get confronted by your exam on test day. How many times have you taken a test and right after you submitted it, the answer randomly came to you? It definitely has happened to me. That is because you memorized it with your short-term memory. Anki is a Japanese structure for active recall that uses space repetition to force your brain into making connections and committing information for the long haul. Not just for passing your certification, because at the end of the day, this information might just help you in your IT job or even in an interview. Number three, practice testing. This is the best way of doing active recall. Specifically, if you do a time-based practice test where you shouldn't be opening up a new Chrome tab or looking up the answers on Reddit, you force yourself to take the test all the way to the end. Why do I think this is the most helpful way of studying? Well, for a couple of reasons, so let me explain. Number one, it helps you practice getting your mind comfortable with testing. This by itself could be a whole other tangent, but in the short, it helps you get comfortable and used to the test feeling so you're not as anxious on test day. Stemming off on number one, it can help you, see how I said can? It all depends on your practice test material, but it can definitely get help you get used to the test structure so you're more comfortable on test day. And it can also help you practice deciding between two possible answers, which is usually how the harder certifications are usually structured. Number three, it helps you find your weak spots in the material that you thought you knew. Going back to the whole, I saw that video, so now I know it fallacy. Now, if you're ready to start your studies, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and open up those flashcards and practice tests and start studying. Talking about certifications, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out my last YouTube video on the AWS Solutions Architect certification. 
Also, please leave a comment down below and uh, let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I want to build a community and deliver the most amount of value by helping you guys advance your IT careers. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.